Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it is time for a deadlift day, but a quick reminder, for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Uh, today went well. Today was a, a three rep day for the top set. Uh, I went easy on it. I put my 550 on. I pulled a triple, left one or two reps in the tank because I'm going to hit a training max next week and called it. All right, a lot of these, I don't need to push these to the bleeding edge. We just need to get these quality 5-3-1 sets in. And I think a lot of times the, the triple days, I don't need to push for M reps. I really think the fives are the best way to do that. Uh, most of the time, again, if you really want to see where your strength is relative to a max, right? Doing those 85% training matches and then repping them out. Again, puts you in a good position to know where you are. But I was real happy with this, held it good at the top. As you guys can see, grip is holding strong. And I did some stuff different today. I'm dropping the percentages just a little bit on the 5x10s because what do we want? These are all really big barbell movements and I'm doing a lot of work on the back end of them. So I need to make sure there are reps in reserve. And what I'm doing is focusing on rep quality. On my squat bench and deadlift, the 5x10s, I want high rep quality, I want high control, I want to dial in my technique while still getting some effective reps to create metabolic fatigue, create hypertrophy, and ingrain those motor patterns. So you guys will notice all this pulling, everything is controlled. I want complete control, all right? So my squat bench and deadlift, this is where the higher specificity of this type of training comes in. I want control. And I still want to have a couple reps on the very last set. I want to see two reps in reserve left on the five by 10. So this wasn't super heavy, right? Everyone's like, dude, we know you can do 405 or sets of 10 to 12. Why are you doing 335 for five by 10? Well, the other thing to keep in mind after we do the really heavy work, we're attenuating upper threshold fibers easier. That's something people forget. Those others, when people pull that off, that's when you're fresh. You hit upper threshold fibers easier after doing really heavy work. So we're getting what we want and we're ingraining some good fatigue, but I'm doing so much volume on everything else to maximize hypertrophy. We don't want to get buried on these movements. Then I did something different. Uh, I'm going to discuss a, it quite a bit for the, for the thing. I decided to front squat something I've been thinking about. I prescribe front squats to some of my clients. Now people are going to say, Jason, but you said, you know, you used to do a lot of front squats. Yes, I did. That they may not necessarily be necessary for powerlifting. I agree with that. However, I'm high bar squatting. I'm trying to build general strength, building my deadlift. And I want to get my forearms and hands and everything stronger through different angles. So I went through my whole phase of axle bar work, got my grip real strong. One of the things I want to do right now is make sure that my hands, my wrists, my forearms are strong and tough. I need them to be durable for my benching. I need them to be durable for my deadlifting. I feel like grip is what's going to determine my deadlift, by the way. Right. My, my deadlift is probably going to be overall limited by grip. I feel like the front squats bring something to the table. Number one, they carry over really well to the high bar squat. They're easier on fatigue. They're easier on fatigue. They're a great upper back. Now, again, people will say, I mean, you said the safety bar squat can replace those back qualities, particularly for things like deadlift carryover. Yes, and I still stand by that. Of course it can. Of course it can. But the hand and the grip in. Now this first set was terrible. I had it in a fingertips rack position. I had the safety bar set too high. I kept tapping them. You guys saw that. I tapped it on what I had to look over. Totally ruined my set. And I decided, you know, let me drop those safeties down and let me just work on the full grip. I used to do a full grip with my thumb over all the time on these. I'm like, I can get back to that. Now, I'd like my elbows a hair higher, but this is a start. And yes, that was almost a limit on it. That was almost a limit on it instead of things like my quads, because I'm only doing 205 here, right? That's not a lot of weight. However, 
keep in mind, my quads and posterior chain, my quads and glutes were fatigued from all that deadlifting. Deadlift works quads. So they're going in fatigued. They're going in fatigued. So it doesn't matter. I'll build these up slowly, and I may do these after back squatting. I'll squat days for a bit. I'll work them in here. But I had to get better and better. Each set got easier on my hands and forearms and everything. As I got along, I got, I got more used to it, learned to get it into a better rack position. It needs work. But if we want to talk about building certain types of mobility, strength is the only way to build mobility. Wait, stretching and stuff and mobility work doesn't do anything. Okay, putting this sort of stress under load is where we build these things. If I want to work a little bit on some of that mobility in the shoulder and everything, especially the ability to raise to the front position, which I can't do, this is probably the only way to do it. And I used to be able to do this all the time. I mean, I've hit a 405 front squat before. So, be a nice tool. And it's nice and big and basic. It carries over to my deadlift. Front squats carry over to the deadlift. They carry over to the, to the high bar squat, which is what I'm going to compete with. And I'm going to compete high bar. And I'm already back over 500 on the high bar. You guys have seen it. In fact, you guys saw my even my four rep set the other day. We're, we're doing well. We're doing well. Uh, again, the front squats will be a nice tool. And the other thing, every you guys will notice that I'm picking bigger and bigger lifts. Even though I have all this equipment to reduce axial loading, I'm doing a lot of axial loading. I want a lot of core work. I want a lot of things that force me to use my back, my erectors, obliques, abs more and more and more. You know, even though I do the reverse hypers, even though I do crunches, I do hanging leg raises. You guys have seen me do toe to bars now and stuff. I have really strong core. I need to keep building it. I need to work it from a lot of angles. And if I've got the recovery to handle it, I need to keep building it up. It's one of the reasons I'm rowing the way I'm rowing now. I want to build all of that. I need all the structures of my core maximized. Especially as I'm cutting, I'm gonna keep getting leaner and leaner and leaner. And I've gotten leaner and I'm still getting leaner. You know, I now have abs and everything, but I'm going to need to lose another 20 pounds of body fat to be competitive in the way that I want to compete. I'm going to have to win through body composition. But what happens is we get leaner. What does every power lifter at coach tell you? When guys start getting real lean, they lose that trunk support. They start losing it. I have to keep doubling down on that. I need to make sure all the musculature of my trunk is maximally developed as I lose body fat so that I can hit elite squats and deadlifts down at very, very low body fats. Because if I keep doing this and I want to keep getting stronger going into Masters 2, if I'm going to get stronger multiple years in a row while making that weight, I have to get leaner because I have to gain muscle. So the end result, two or three years from now, I might be walking into meets at 9% body fat be walking in pretty shredded. I'm going to have to win through body composition because I am a little tall for the 198. People forget that. I'm a little tall for the class, to be honest. I'm going to have to be leaner than my competition. Now, granted, Masters, it's a different ball game. That's the reason I can get away with it at my height. In the open, it would, it would never be viable. It's almost impossible. But nobody's squatting. 750 in the masters too in those sort of weight classes that no it doesn't happen nobody's even squatting 700 not even close so again people are going to try to argue those facts and i'm sorry that's a whole different different topic there's one guy who's close to 700 and he can't squat more than 600 at a heavier body weight in any other federation so take that for what it's worth Basically, he got an eight inch high squat past and a tiny fed that's only exist in a single state in the US. And I'm not gonna get further into that. That's what I suspect, because he can't do it anywhere else. So that being said, you know, I'm gonna have to win through body composition. But a lot of this means I'm gonna need to do phases in my training where I do do all the axial loading. I need to be doing bent over rows, not anything chest supported, 
I need to maintain that tension on my back. I need things like front squats. Okay, we need to be doing these things. I might need to work my good mornings back in. Some of this other stuff might need to come out. I might end up re replacing things like the glute ham raise with good mornings again. I need to keep that back developing. I need all that support musculature. We need it. Got to keep maximizing it. Cutting or not. And now we're at this point, all the volumes are high. It's like I said in yesterday's vlog, I did tons of GPP, built my work capacity up. Now I cut the GPP and we take it over to training volume in the weight room so we can maximize body composition for the rest of this cutting. Okay, I have to gain muscle during this cut. Needs to happen. And four people jump in and say, but you said that's impossible. I've never said that's impossible. Without coming out and saying it, I am competing and trying to break non-tested records. And if you don't understand that, then, then I don't know what else to tell you. And before people say, well, you're not strong enough to be doing that. Really, when I break records, which my lifts are already, some of them are high enough to already be there, then you can't use that argument. Right, that's just silly. Now, <laughs> we did neck training to finish off, as you guys know that I like to do these days. Uh, people are going to accuse me of lying. I only got four sets on camera. I did five. I did five. But the camera, I hit the record button wrong and I lost a set. So I only got four recorded. Uh, of course, people will use this as evidence again that I'm, I'm just a big liar. Because they always, everyone loves to accuse me of lying about everything. Even things that I've been 100% honest about. It blows my mind. Uh, all the time. So I lied about doing five sets of these because there's only four on camera. So there you guys have it. I'm a big old fat liar. But I really did do five sets. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time. <laughs>